Alright, Shalom. Kahalai and La Yahweh by Shimmy Awusha by Hashem Rakaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule it as well. Must be of and salutations to the brothers doing its work and truth and sincerity. Shalom, this is your young brother Batak back again through the Spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, this is edifying. This book of Psalms, chapter 57, verse 1. It says, To the chief musician, Altiz. It's like a. Uh, Altiz. I'll teach it. It's like it. I know I'm saying that so wrong. Metam of David it says, When he fled from Saul in the cave, it says, Be merciful unto me, O power. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusted in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So, you got to think about the situation that King David was in when he, you know, was basically saying this, singing a psalm, this prayer to the Lord. You know, you got to think about the situation. You know, he had fled from Saul, which ultimately, most likely, Saul tried to kill him. So, we're going to be in situations in these last days that people are going to desire uh, to have our heads. You know, they're going to desire to kill us, man. But we got to trust in the shadow of Yahweh by Shemuel You know, uh, whatever um, situation that we find ourselves in, you know, we got to we gotta, uh, always be circumspect of everything. But most importantly, we got to trust in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Don't, and you can't trust, the scripture says, curses he that put his confidence in men. Man, make flip. Let me see. Uh, let me get that real quick. Oh, it's, it might be men. Oh, it's like I'm spelling something wrong. Well, this is a good one. This is not what I was looking for, but it's, it's a good one. The good book of Proverbs 25 and 19. Confidence in and and confidence in an unfaithful man in the time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. So, so basically, confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is uh it's uh it's something that you cannot rely on. It's something that is not strong, it's something that's not dependable untrustworthy you know flesh his arm i was looking for this one jeremiah 17 5 it says thus said yahweh cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm which means what your strength you making flesh your strength and whose heart departed from yahweh so like the scripture says, confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth. What can you do with a fucking broken tooth? You know what I'm saying? What could you do without a, with a foot that's out of joint? You can't stand up right. You can't walk. You can't run. So, basically that makes it, makes um, trusting in having your confidence in a, 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 a man that could lie to you or that could change on you. It's untrustworthy. It's not dependable. But it's not the same with Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. <laughs> we trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahushah because we know that he will have our backs if we trust in him. I did, uh, he's uh, slucky. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10 tells you that. Or Sirach 2 and 10. You know, it tells you look at the generations of old. That means look at the men in the past. The scripture says, Romans 15 and 4, the things that are written aforetime, written out for our learning. So, the men that went through situations in the past, you got to go and, you know, read, go back and read. That's why the scripture says in Revelations 1 and 3, blessed is he that read it. So, you got to go back and read what happened to certain men that put their trust into Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You know? Go see what happened. How What happened at the end of those men. And I'm going to give you an account of, um, I'm going to give you an account of uh, the what these certain men that put their trust in the Lord. You know, I haven't went into this lesson in a little in a little while, so you know, Lord, wouldn't it be edifying? 
But um, we're going to see what happens when you put your trust in the Lord. Let's put it to the test. You know, let's let's read a let's read a story. It's a book of uh, Psalms 57 and 2. It says, I will cry unto the most high. Unto the mo God, the most high. Unto the most high. That performeth all things for me. So we got to cry to Yahweh by Shemel Shah because he can do what? Whatever. The Lord can do everything or anything. And that's why we can't put no limit on Yahweh by Shemel Shah like, like Ronald Dalton. That idiot, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, un that unlearned man that really don't have faith in Yahweh by Shemel Shah and he's denying the power of the scriptures. or And he's denying the power of the Lord. We cannot limit the power of the Lord. Uh, let me see. Limit. Because you can't put no limits on the Lord's power. Psalms 78 and 41. It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted the Most High and limited the Holy One of Israel. Let's see what that says for the word limited. Uh, 73. And, uh, Let's see, Psalms 73, and I believe it's in the 40s. No. 21? Nope. 78. It's like here. It's not 73. 78. Let's look at that word limited. Okay, it says, um, she, uh, okay, it says, to pain, wound, trouble, cause pain, any pain, any profitable. Let's see what that word profitable means. Looking for something that's in a different context. Let me see. See what the etymology of that was. Let's see it. Do a similar idea for scrap to pieces to grieve, limit, confusion. To be grieved. Okay, here it is. This is the con this is the word I'm looking for. Okay, to scrabble, to limit. To mark, make, or set a mark. So you're basically, you know, you're marking the, uh, you're, you're basically putting a, a limit to your Hawa Bashimal Shah's power. To imprint. So you're basically putting a limit to your Hawa Bashimal's power. You can't do that. The Lord gets pissed off, you know, because it's been many times in the scriptures. Where certain um, individuals was told, you know, uh, what the Lord the Lord told you what He was gonna do, and they didn't believe it, you know, like uh, for example, Abraham's wife uh, Sarah, um, she was told that she was gonna have a, a child at her old age, and she didn't believe it. She laughed, and that's why the uh, Isaac's name that's where Isaac got his name from, just like when um, uh, John the Baptist's parents. His father, an angel came to his father and told him that he was going to um, basically have a son. But he didn't believe it. So what did the Lord do because he didn't believe in him? The Lord made him mute. He couldn't talk until that thing fulfilled was fulfilled. Until she had the baby. You know what I'm saying? That's when he was able to talk. So, right there, limiting the power of Yahweh Bashim al is offensive. It's offensive, man. It's disrespectful. And that's exactly what um, Ronald Dalton is doing. He's limiting the power of the Lord. But um, that's another lesson for another time. Just, you know, giving you an example to, that you need to have, you know, faith in Yahweh Bashim al and his abilities. You know, the scripture says what? Be strong in the Lord and the pow power of his might. What does that word might mean? It means abilities. 
what the Lord is able to do, which is any damn thing. If he can create a sun, he can create the earth, he can create animals, he can create your ass. Why is it so hard for him to do little things to us, to deliver us out of to receiving death, man? Um, I was going to go to Ephesians. Ephesians 6 and, 11, 6 and 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. So, in the power of his might is what he's able to do. His abilities. We believe in that. We believe in what the Lord is able to do. If he can create all of these things that exist from the animals to the earth to, you know, create something like Leviathan, you know, if the Lord create these things, how hard is it for him to do something as simple as deliver your ass from death, man? He has done it before. He has delivered men from death before. So it's hard for the Lord to do these things? No, it's not hard for him to do these things. Psalms chapter 57, verse 3 says, he, he shall ascend from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Salah, the Most High, shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set as on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are, are spears and arrows in their tongue, a sharp sword. Because what? They're going to ultimately, you know, uh, King David understood that a lot of people are not going to be your friends. This world is full of, you know, our enemies, man. You know, and and they're not gonna hesitate. It's not they're not gonna hesitate to turn upon you and, and do harm to you, because that's the nature of nature of some of these people, and especially in a time of trouble. In a time that everybody's gonna be turning their backs on each other, and the the scripture says what the love of many shall wax cold. So, so it's really gonna be dog. It's 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 already a dog eat dog world. But it's going to even be worse in that time, man. That's why it says in Daniel chapter 12, a time like never before. Verse uh, 5, it says, Be thou exalted, O the Most High, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit for, before me. In the midst thereof, they are fallen themselves. Right? So... The Lord is going to cause Esau to fall into his own traps. So let's go. Let's give you. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's go to the book of Daniel. This is uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the corny, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and decimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And it's the same, the same rules apply today. If you don't want to get down with Esau's MOTB system, you're going to be what? Put to death. Verse, uh, verse 12 says, there, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the provinces of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do ye not serve my power, my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready that at that, that at what time 
ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, if ye would not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? See, he got proud. He got proud. Nebuchadnezzar got proud against the Howard Bashar al Shah. And that's one of the main reasons why the Lord turned him to a beast. Because he Nebuchadnezzar got proud. He humbled his ass, man. Made him he turned him into a beast and made him eat. And made him eat uh uh cattle. Oh, it's not not cattle. It said the scripture says he ate he was gonna eat grass like a cattle. So the Lord turned him to a, made him go, reduced him down to a beast-like state, you know, verse, just because he got proud. The Lord had to put him in his place, and that's exactly what the Lord has done has done to Esau, had did Esau his son at a point in time, but now Esau is back in power, and the Lord is going to bring him down back to his low estate once again. Verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, we are not care. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If if it is, if it be so, our power, who we whom we serve, which is Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh is the name of the Father, Yahweh Shah is the name of the True Son, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So they what? They, what did they show at that? They showed courage. You know, against adversity, they stood up against a, a, a great, powerful king that was able to put you to death. And then the same shit applies in a time of that we're living in now. Esau is that king, and he has the he has the means, he has the power to do, put put you to uh, put you to death, put you in jail. He can do whatever you want to do, man. Because Esau is stronger than us. But guess what? Yahweh Bashim Al Shah is stronger than him. So we got we got a we got a trump card on this devil, man. It says uh, verse seven, 18, It says, but if not, so they was, but even though they made it clear that if the Lord delivered them or not, they were still not gonna do it. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. <laughs> Salaki. Salaki. Um, so basically when um after they said that, you know Nebuchadnezzar felt disrespected, man. He felt you know, he's a king. And everybody reverences the king. Everybody do does what the king says. Nobody talks back to the king. The king does not supposedly tolerate disrespect or back sins or you not doing what he says. So everybody always does what the king says, but they stood up. They showed some courage against the king. And you know how the king felt after that. Verse 19, it says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visual was changed. Because these are men that had certain type of uh, position in Babylon. So he expected them to do, to set this so-called, set the example for everybody else. But they stood stiffly in the name of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. It says, um, I'm going to start at verse 19 and again at the top. It says, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visuals, vis, visage was changed against Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded, and commanded, it's like, bear one second. Says, uh, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was was wont to be heated. So they they made sure that the um the furnace was as hot as it can be. Verse twenty it says, and he commanded the mighty angel. That's lucky. I'm tripping. It says, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army 
to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery, fern, burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, so, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew these th those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, um, the fire it was the the furnace was so hot that it even killed it even killed the uh, the guys that threw them in there. That's how hot the furnace was, man. It says, therefore, because the king, well, yeah, verse twenty-three, and these three and these three men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So they was they was tied up, you know, so they couldn't, you know, so they couldn't escape. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, astoned. And rose up in haste. So he got up out of his, you know, probably his chair or his king's seat, whatever, and spake and said unto his counselors. Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire of the fire? Because what he seen something. Nebuchadnezzar, he seen something. What did he see? It's so he it, it, it scared it, it, it surprised him. He was in shock. It says, They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. It says he answered and said, Lo, I he said, Look. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high. So what does that mean? That means that the Lord saved them from that fire. The Lord sent the angel to deliver them out of that fire. Daniel chapter 3 verse 25 it says he answered and said lo I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach Meshach and Abednego ye servants of the most high God come forth and come hither then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire, and the and the princes and governors and captains and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a was a hair on their heads sink. Neither did the coats change. Neither did the smell of fire had been on them. Why? Because the Lord put a force field around them. According to what the apostles teach, the Lord, they, they said the Lord most likely put a force field around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the point that they, that, um, they was not affected by the fire. And it was, and it was, it wasn't not only when they was in the fire, but most likely before they was even thrown in the fire. Because remember, the, the fire slew the ones that threw them in there. So from the time that they really even got in the damn um, furnace, they was protected by Yahweh by Shah. Let's see. And Yahweh Shah is going to save his elect. And I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, like it uh it says son of the most high yeah 
forget what verse it was. Yeah, it says son of God. I'm not sure exactly if it's referring to an angel or is it referring to Yahweh Shah? I'm not clear. I have to relook, you know, go back and uh, relook at that. Uh, look at that description. But either way it go, you know, either way you cut the cake, the Lord delivered them. That's all that matters. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, verse 27 says, not pass. Verse 28, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. And that's exactly the Lord is going to give the elect the spirit to be able to withstand against Esau Edom, man, in these last days. You know? To stand up against this devil, man. <sighs> so, uh, let's see. What I was going to get? I was going to get something. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was also written about in the Apocrypha. All you got to do is go to the... Uh, the three holy children. Where, where, where is it? Oh man, the prayer of Emma. Nope, the letter of Jeremiah. No, it's not that. It's supposed to be the three holy children. It's not on this app. Damn. I got Ed, first Edge, second Edge, Tobit, Judith, additions to Esther. Let's see. Is it just additions to Esther? Uh, might not. Nah, it's not. It's, it's the it's on Solomon, letter to Jeremiah, prayer. I'm sorry. Nope. Not that. Okay, um, apparently it doesn't have it on here. I thought I thought this app had the the three holy children. I was gonna go into that. But uh this story right here, Bell and the Dragon is referring to what happened to Dian Daniel in the Lion's Den. Hold on. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go to it. When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. This is the book of uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 6. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 provinces, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the, pe the, like the princes might give account unto him, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was within him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the president of, let me, see, let me get to the point. I'm gonna start at verse seven. It says, all the princes of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the, and the collectors and the captains and the consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days save of thee O king he shall be cast into the den of lions now O king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the me and the Persians which alter not wherefore king Darius signed the writing and the decree now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being opened in a chamber toward Jerusalem he kneeled upon the knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks unto his power as he did aforetime. Then he then then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his for his power. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. 
Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any power or man within thirty days, save thee, O king, shall be cast to the den of lions? Then the king answered and said, This thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is the children of the cap captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh a petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these things, these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Right, because uh, even even within the situation, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, King Darius, he liked that. He liked Daniel. You know what I'm saying? He was well pleased with uh with Daniel, and he didn't want to do, per se. He didn't want to do. Uh, he didn't want to cast him to the lions. Then, verse fourteen again. Then the king, when he heard these things, was sore displeased with him himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Right, so he wanted to try to get Daniel out of the situation. It says, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, King, king know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy power whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone and a stone was brought and and laid upon the mouth of the den. So they tried, they wanted oh intentionally, you know what I'm saying, lock him in there so he can't get out. Of course, you know, it's very clear that they wanted to lock him in there. They wanted to lock him in there. So he cannot escape. But we're going to see what exactly happens when you have faith in Yahweh by Shemal Shah. And he trusted in him, man. <sighs> so we're going to see what happens. Uh, verse 17 again says, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own seal. Signets like it, and with the signet of his lords, that the that the purpose might not change concerning Dan, Daniel. Then the king went into his place, palace, and passed passed the night fasting. Whether neither were instruments of music brought before him, and the sleep went from him. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. Because by now they would have assumed that the lions would have been on Adam. Verse 20 it says, And when he came to the den, he cried with the limit, 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 lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living power, is thy power, like it, is thy power whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Then Daniel then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My power have sent his angel and have shut the mouths, shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency in innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king. Have I done no hurt? Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. Up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his power. And the king, and the king commanded and, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast him into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. So... <laughs> they took the whole everything in there, all of them in there. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. 
So Daniel believed in the Heavenly Father, man. So if we if we're innocent, Esau is gonna bring charges upon us, of course. He's gonna charge us with this, say we're doing this, you know, he's gonna, you know, according to his laws, his bullshit as unrighteous decrees, we are breaking so called laws, you know. He's gonna call it treason or you know, or deem us a terrorist because under the Patriot Act. So we we expect Esau to try to bring charges upon us. But ultimately, they're not going to stick because in the eyes of the Lord, we're innocent. We're what? We're, we're, uh, we have integrity. What is that? With? Blamelessness. We're blameless when it comes to that, man. Esau can bring up whatever the fuck charge he want. They're not going to stick, man. They're not going to stick. You, you want to just, Esau want to justify putting a righteous man to death. They tried that in the past. And what happened? The Lord delivered those men. But if we have, a, have to be a martyr for you, how was that sake, then so let it be. You know, it's easier said than done, but we're going to Lord willing. You know, the Lord have us prepared in my mind to, to, to risk it all for, for believing in his work and believing in him. So, Lord willing, you be ready. We be ready for that day when it comes. If we have to be martyrs and die by way of the guillotine, the Lord going to give us the strength and the mental uh, fortitude to be able to do it, man. And we believe that. Um, so these are the fruits of uh, being innocent in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, let me see. Let me see the scripture. Let me see. The Lord don't like when somebody's innocent. That, that when you shed innocent blood, that'll be another sin on Esau, man. You know, if he killed the innocent man, which he always does, and that's what Esau do. Oh, that's a good precept. This is uh, Deuteronomy 27 and 25. Curse be he that takes reward to slay an innocent man, innocent person, and all the people shall say amen. So the Lord don't like that. The Lord don't like when you slay the innocent. Man. Said Job 17 and 8. It says, Upright man shall be astoned at this, sunny at this. And the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. And who is the innocent? The righteous. Job 33 and 9. It says, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. And that's what we're hoping. We're hoping that the Lord has wiped our, our slate clean, man. You know? We hoping that the Lord has wiped, wiped our slate clean. Um, let's see. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 20 says, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by deceit? And that's what Esau does. He framed mischief by deceit. And that's what he's setting up. He's setting up all his legislations. And, you know, he's framing it. He's framing it by law. Uh, Psalms 94 and 20. Shall the house of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood and that's exactly what he's trying to do in these last days man if you don't want to follow after his 
MO2B, you don't want to set follow after his system that he's setting up. He's on he wanna condemn you to death now. Cause he feel like you whatever the fuck this devil feel, man. We don't care. But um it's it's Yahweh by Shemiah Shah's laws that matter. What about all the laws that you have broken, Esau? You feel like you innocent of that? No, you're worthy of judgment judgment from Yahweh by Shemiah Shah because of uh because of all the laws you broke, but you want to charge somebody and call call him a terrorist, call him treason. Charge him with treason. All kinds of bullshit. Cause you know what the scriptures speak about you? You you're nothing but a hypocrite. And that's and that and we have identifying you as being a hypocrite of the earth now. But um Sulaki, I know this lesson was a little long. You know, I just want to get to these points about Daniel and the Lions then, you know, and uh Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, which are the Babylonian names. Um they have Hebrew names. But um uh Lord willing, man, this lesson was edified, edifying. I haven't went into these, you know, topics of conversation for a while. But as you can see, man, they trust in the Lord. And what happened? Let's close it out with this. I know I quoted it earlier. I'm going to I'm gonna get this close out. Romans 15 and 4 says, that For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And who... And where our hope lies at in Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So we believe these scriptures cold heartedly. You know what I'm saying? To the Lord, the Lord willing to the death of us, we believe these scriptures. You know, because these scriptures are our only testimony, man. It's our only our only witness. It's our only evidence, man. These what what is what is said in these scriptures is our only uh uh is our um breeding grounds. Our uh what's the word I'm looking for? Our foundation. The scriptures is our foundation, man. We're that uh, the scriptures is that rock. And that rock is who? Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is our rock because Yahweh Shah is the word. So with that, man, Lord, will you best edify with this lesson? I'm gonna close out. It's so lucky for being, you know, if I'm rambling or being too long. So I'm gonna close out by saying giving all praises and in glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, or Kahakodash, double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone. We're ruling these well. Months, peace, love, and salutation to the brothers and work and truth and sincerity. Want to say shalom? Kumiya shalom. Wa abad baba wa abad adawam shalom.